Hey guys, welcome back to part number, I think we're up to seven of my F16, um, the Tamiya 30 second scale um, build. So in this part we're going to touch upon the decals and weathering. I'm not going to go into a huge amount of detail here because I've done it so many times in other videos. I actually did a lot of detail for an upcoming, the next one, the F15 build. I did a lot of detail, so I don't want to keep repeating myself and creating boring content. So I do touch upon it a bit more of a high level, so we'll, we'll go through the decals and the, um, the weathering. Um, and that, that's pretty much it. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so on to decaling. So you see, I put a few on already. I never used after um, burner decals before. I wasn't sure exactly how they were. So my tip is always start with smaller ones, kind of outweigh just to see, make sure there's no disaster. I mean, that works, then come the bigger ones. So I did the bigger ones first, this giant guy, um, some other stuff. Also did one side of the tail. And it went down beautifully, actually. Um, just looking here, I mean, especially on here, see, you can see all the rivets coming through and it really kind of bedded down nicely using the set and sole. I'm not going over this a lot because um, every video will do the same thing, it's getting repetitive. So th these ones note, there's a lot of ones with these this set of decals where you get the white backing um, and it was here too. Um, and then you, you put multiple decals on over the top. So basically what that means is um, you just bed down your decal, um, set and sole, the usual stuff, let it really kind of dry and then a couple hour or two later you can put the other one over the top. Don't do it too early otherwise the thing shifts and you, you kind of messed up. So this was just white um, on the American flag and I did the red parts in and then we're going to add the, the red stripes and now we're going to add the blue um, as a third part of that decal. So it's actually a three part decal. So I'm going to look at my sheet right here and this is the bit right here so I'm just going to cut it out and hot water I use, um, I just, just, just threw that water in the microwave for 20 seconds, just kind of heat it up a little bit. And dip it in, boom, done, out. Some people leave it in the water, I don't need to do that, just dip it and leave it on the plastic. Put, put a shot so you can see it. Let it just kind of do its thing. Um, these things work pretty quickly. Um, typically, probably want to go in with some sole, so, sorry, micro set first, the blue one. And then one set. 10-15 minutes once it's really kind of bedded down not moving, come back add a little bit of sole which kind of grips it to the surface and, and kind of really kind of locks it in. Um, because we're going over the top of another DK, I'm not going to use any um, any, any set. I'm just going to put it straight on. So another top tip I tell you about all this time, these Tamiya uh, decal tweezers, flat tweezers are amazing. You can grip all the decals, move them around. Um, it's really kind of one of those tools I, I use every time and love. Alright, so Okay, this is working a little bit. Um, just try to figure out where it goes. It goes like. Okay, so I'm going to move this into place. So it goes. There it goes like that. And that's it. Done. Um, one thing I need to look, look research on is the, um, the star and bar here. On afterburn decals, it says to do it on the right wing. On Tamir's instructions, it do it on the left wing. So I just need to just verify that with some reference shots. So I left that one to the side. Um, talking about earlier, so this one, another decal has a white stripe on. Um, this is a separate one, so this is, kind of goes behind it. So this, this was done earlier today, so it's fully set and um, not going anywhere. So then we can just quickly take the checker pattern, it goes on top. Just cutting it off the sheet. And it's, these, these decals are nice too, it has all these stencils as well, because to me it has notoriously um, thick decals, so I can use all the stencils from this set as well. So it's a really nice set actually, so I'm just going to make sure this is fully wet. Again, just throw it on my mat. I just do it thing for a few seconds. And while it's doing that, um, let me talk a little bit about these guys. Um, so I bought, you may have seen my earlier videos, I bought this set here, which is Edward XL 520, which is the stencil data masks. So it's basically photo etch, and you basically cut out what you need and you spray over it. Um, I tried it, and it didn't really work for me. I did a few, and then I just wiped it off with some um, airbrush cleaner, and um, 
I'm going to go ahead with the decals. The problem with these are, it's good in theory, but it's because there's solid round, like brass around it, it's really hard to see. So with normally the decal, say you've got a light up on a panel line, you can really see it's clear, so you can see where it's going. But if you've got like, what, maybe three to five millimeters of brass around it, you can, can't see, so it's really hard to line it up and get it online. So I really had a hard time with that. Um, so that's why I didn't use them. So just kind of he heads up on that one. So let me go back to this. It should be good to go. So I'm just going to do this off camera real quick because it's hard for me to walk around a tripod. I want to make sure this thing lines up correctly. So I want to ruin my um, my model. So just bear with me Let's get this lined up. using these tweezers just to kind of manipulate it and get it kind of where I need it to be. And right there. So perfect. I'm not going to fiddle too much with that. I'll just kind of leave it go where it is. Um, so let's do a normal decal um, and then we'll call it a day. I don't think you need to see me do the whole thing. So what we're doing, we're doing AF346. Make sure I get the right tail number. And it's short Air Force Base, so it's the SW. And it's a dark blue, one of these. So it's going to dip it in the water. Boom, this guy, boom, and this one, oops, okay, and then while it's doing this thing, we're going to use the micro set sole, so set first, so what the positioning is, just going to brush them on, The SW goes just below this line. It's not very exciting to viewing, but I'm just kind of just getting this straight as best I can. It's kind of Okay, I think that looks pretty good. Mm -hmm. 
It's kind of standing back and seeing how it looks. It's tricky to get this straight. Just a little bit down on this. And I think we are good. Cool. And that is pretty much it. So now this one's just finish the loop, I guess. Close the loop. So this has been down for a few few minutes now. We're just gonna come back in with the number two, which is the sole, the red one. I'm just gonna carefully brush a little bit on, and that will grip it down to the surface. So that is it. So I'm gonna go ahead and work on the rest of these um, these decals and get this lot little stencil stuff, and I'll keep going. And um, I'll come back when I'm kind of closer to the end and give an update on how I'm doing. Okay, the decals are all on, no problems, went on pretty good. Not a ton of but like used to doing phantoms and those kind of jets, there's tons and tons of stencil data. Um, with this, the F-16, I guess maybe it's operational too, there's not so much um, at all. So it was pretty pleasant to be honest with you. So just kind of threw the uh, stabilizers on and the tail and stuff, just kind of see how it looks. And yeah, looking really good. So it's going around, around it a little bit, you can kind of see there's not tons at all in this one. That's the major kind of one, I guess, the free part one we talked about earlier, um, the Northern Watch. And underneath there's a few, but not much at all. So pretty cool. So one thing too is, oh, I'm just kind of getting work over this. So yeah, so the decals on after burner are incorrect. Um, I did check and it does go on the, this one, Stars and Bar, does go on the left wing. So on the structures it shows the right wing. Um, Tamiya's instructions show left wing. I looked up the actual aircraft itself online on Google, and it, in fact, could see if it does have on the left wing. So that is a typo in the um, afterburner decals, so just beware of that. Um, I, I figured so. I've, all, I've built tons of US Air Force stuff, and it's always on the left wing, pretty much. Um, so oh, so that's where we're at. So decals are on, um, set, set, it, not, set setting solution used, and it's been you know, several hours, actually, it's been overnight. So now I'm coming back with some more LP9 lacquer gloss coat just to seal all the decals in. So I'm just going to not go over the whole jet, obviously we, we declared it already. So I'm just going to go over the tail and whatever the decals are, just kind of give it a little coat, just kind of seal it in and protect it before we come back with the weathering washes. So I'm going to do that right now and then we'll leave that for dry for a few hours and we'll come back and then we'll start the weathering. Okay, now time to put a pan line wash on. Now every video is the same thing for me. It's the flurry dot that it's a product they use, and I've put some on this wing to kind of go show you. So this has nothing on it, and this has some on. I'm taken off already. If you can see how you kind of pick out those panel lines and stuff, it's kind of hard in the light. Maybe if I kind of turn it down a little bit, you can kind of see it a little bit better. How it picks out the detail, and on this side there's none. Okay. So super easy. All you do is. Um, this is the very end of a bottle. Typically, just decant it into a little container. You don't want to kind of get it, um, put anything in it. It's going to kind of contaminate it. Um, as it's the very end of the bottle, I'm just going to stick my brush right in here. All you do is just rub it on. As easy as that. Got to make sure it covers everywhere all the panel lines. Pull this clamp up. As I mentioned, I'm right at the back, at the bottom of this bottle, so it's almost done. So it's gonna come on. Just basically cover everywhere. I did that part already. I think it's just up here. It's going to show a little better on a lighter grey. The gunship grey is not going to show as much this colour, but it will have something on there. And I 
I think I did that bit already. And as easy as that. So you just splodge it all on, leave it to dry for about 30 minutes, and we'll come back and then we'll take it off with some paper towel. Okay, so been about 30, 40 minutes and it's dry. Well, most of it, a little bit wet still, but so did tail and the other parts as well. So real easy. Just take a bit of paper towel and just literally just wipe it off. How do we use that? As we use that gloss coat, it's going to come off no problem at all. Standard power lines, as you can kind of see there. If you use a matte coat or a more of a rougher finish, it's going to be a lot more dirty and hard to get off. If you need to kind of stubborn, just 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 give it a little bit, lick, lick it a little bit, and a little bit of water, and it'll come off no bother. Just being a little careful of the decals, even though they're sealed in. In the past, I've saw problems where I ripped them and gone through. So just being careful, and kind of these parts at the end, just kind of going with the flow of the air fl airflow. So kind of doing it backwards. And there you go. See how it picks out all that detail. Oop, knocking it over. So on the aircraft, get a piece of paper towel. Again, just hydrating it, like licking it a little bit, a little bit of liquid, just to kind of get it going. And there you go. See how it picks up that little detail, how beautiful it is. As easy as that. So I'm just going to work my way around the rest of the aircraft and the other parts. And then when I'm done, we'll come back and then we'll talk about the next part. Right, so it's been another day's past, the power of editing. So... The wash is on and off, and I've added a matte coat um, in preparation for the oils. Now, that matte coat is going to be the last um, clear coat I do on this. Um, once I add the oils, that's it. I kind of leave it as is. So, actually looking really good. Um, I did hose on the XF86, so it's still a little bit of a sheen. As you can see in the light there, which is perfect. I didn't want it kind of dead flat. But I just want it flat enough to kind of grip the, um, the oils. So then you can kind of see how it's, you know, the panel line wash is really kind of picking it out and you know, different colors and really happy how it's looking. So I'm now going to hit the final stage. It's going to be neat oils. Now I'm not going to go for a huge thing on this, mainly because it's kind of repetitive. So I do the same thing every time. Also, right after this video series, I've already filmed and edited the F15 Great Wall Hobbies kit, the 70 uh, second scale one. I was going to say 48, but I think 70 second scale. And I actually did one of the videos, I actually really went into half an hour of how I did this in detail. So if you can kind of stick by, you know, another four to six weeks, mm -hmm. um, that'll be a better video than then. Um, so I'm just going to do it real quick and kind of show you the, the gist of it for anybody who hasn't seen those videos. Um, well, my previous videos, obviously you've not seen the one that's coming up in the future, right? <laughs> so, um, Appetite Long, smoke is a color I, I really like. Um, I had this years and you barely use any. What, five, six dollars, this will last you a lifetime. You use a very tiny amount. Um, and I, I, I have lots of different colors. I go with different colors all the time. And at the end of the day, I always come back to smoke. That's just my favorite color for this kind of work. So I'm just going to take a little bit. You see that? That's why I added just a tiny, tiny little bit from the end um, onto a paper towel. You can use a bit of cardboard. The purpose of this is really kind of leaches, le leaches the oils out, the linseed oil, so it kind of dries a little bit quicker. So all I'm going to do is, I've got three brushes. i got this little brush for applying, and then I've got a couple of various, a stiff brush and a little bit um, softer brush just for blending. And these are my go-to oil brushes, I guess. And then the other thing is, is I have some enamel thinners. In this case, we'll be using um, Abtai Lung, but it's all the same stuff. You've got AK, um, even the, the, the Tamiya enamel thinners with a blue top, which I have. That's a really good 
good quality too. So any any kind of enamel thing is um, just really just clean the brushes and if you go a little crazy, kind of wipe it off. Um, so the nice thing about this is it take, does take a few days to dry and it does kind of, kind of over time, just kind of really kind of marinate. I, that's not really a word I'm looking for, but it kind of really kind of, um, kind of beds down and, and mellows out a little bit. But um, if you do go over, over the top, you just a little bit of enamel thinners, a drop, and the whole thing will come off easily. Um, so, as I mentioned before, flat coat, if you try to do it on gloss, whenever you, it'll just it'll wipe right off, you wouldn't, wouldn't grip it. So you do need a somewhat flat coat. Um, so a little bit of, on the brush here, and let's start by doing the spine over the middle here, I think. So, just gonna, very small amount with this stuff a lot goes a very very long way I'm just following the panel lines okay then come back with my stiffer brush and just blend it in she forgot to do a little bit at the top here so a little bit at the top. And come out with a softer brush. Again, just like putting makeup on, I guess, just blend it. Really blend it all in. I'm just following the panel lines. And it's as easy as that. And you can see how it just picked out those lines like that. Um, not good too crazy. I'm just going to pick out a few more the wings and um, other parts. So like I said, my future videos and our previous videos, I've gone into this detail. I'm just, like, just kind of, this video is pretty much high level, just kind of going over it real quick. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead and do some more of this stuff um, off camera and then we'll come back and I'll kind of show you where I'm at. Okay, took about an hour and we're done. So you can see it's looking pretty good. Kind of weathered up. Keep knocking over the super glue. You can see how it went through some panel lines, dirtied up a little bit. This is just loose. And on the underside. Looks better. I think this color really looks better on the light ghost gray. The darker gray is kind of a little bit hard to see. But you can see, definitely weathered it up. And it got the effect that I wanted. One thing I kind of figured out, which I never kind of did before too, which kind of really helped was... In the lid of the enamel thinners, there's barely nothing, just residue, right? So, once I put the, um, once I applied the oil and before I blend it, if it wasn't blending very good, what I did was I literally just dipped my brush into the residue, which is a very tiny little bit, and wiped off any extra, and then went through it. It helped the um, oils flow a little bit better. Um, so that was a top tip too. So bet really barely, I, any any oils wipes this all off. It, 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 it doesn't stick very easily um, until it dries. So just a tiny little bit, just like I say, a little bit of residue on there, um, and that was enough on a brush to get it going. And once it got going, I came with the with the, um, the softer brush and kind of blended it a little bit more. Um, and I kind of got it down the lines and kind of where I wanted it to go. Because um, it, it stuff can kind of dry and get a little bit kind of sticky, tricky to kind of maneuver. Oh, so it's tail falling off again. So there we are. So that's the um, weathered bird. Now plenty more left to do. Um, we've also got to get the radar in. We've got to paint the nose cone, all the landing gear bay and all that kind of stuff. Um, to come up. So, firstly, I apologize for the sound quality in the last couple of videos. I didn't realize, but my actual microphone broke the cable. So it's been running off the camera audio. I didn't realize until I filmed a couple of episodes. Um, it's not been running off the shotgun mic. Um, so I need to get a new cable and fix that. So, again, again, apologize for the audio. Um, also, again, this has been a pretty kind of quick, fast paced kind of video compared to my usual ones. But like I said, I've done all this in other videos and upcoming videos too in more detail. So I didn't feel the need to kind of just repeat myself, you know, for half an hour extra as I needed to do. So hopefully it gives you kind of tips to get to where I'm at now. Um, and I say almost done, come back next week. Um, we'll start getting this thing pieces together and ready for a final reveal. 
So again, as always, thank you for watching. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing, liking, all that kind of stuff. And until next time, have a great one. Goodbye.